Hi, my beautiful scented friends. Welcome back to my world of fragrance. The day has come. I'm going to be doing a review on the House of Chanel. So this is going to be my top favorites from the brand. And this is probably one of my favorite designer brands, actually. This is a collaboration video with my friend Pep over at the Sentinel, and he's going to be sharing his favorites from Chanel as well. He's let me know that he's not a like total fanboy of this house, whereas I'm kind of a fangirl because of that nostalgic aspect. So I think it's going to be really fun to see what his favorites are from the house. Please do check out his video down below. So my mother wore Chanel and it's a big part of my fragrance journey or my fragrance story because it does remind me of my childhood. She wore number five specifically and number 19. And although my mother couldn't afford, you know, amazing Chanel suits, if she put her pennies together, she could still afford maybe a little bottle of a Chanel fragrance. And that just made her feel like a million bucks. So in that sense, this house does have a special place in my heart. So Chanel was established in 1909 by Gabrielle, aka Coco Chanel, and she was a couturier, so she, you know, created clothing, and this is a fashion brand originally. Chanel is still privately owned, it's a family-based business, and that just blows my mind that they've managed to come so far and remain relevant um, despite the times, and also be like at the top <laughs> when it comes to fragrance. So although this is a historic fashion house, this is also a pivotal house in the world of fragrance. I feel like in some ways Chanel is extremely overrated, but in other ways it is extremely underrated. So the main line is super popular. Everyone knows number five. I mentioned that in my bedtime fragrance video. I do wear that one to bed. There's Anteus, there's Pour Monsieur, there's number 19, there's Coco, of course. There are many favorites for me in that line, and mainly they're the classic ones. So the, for this video, I wanted to focus on their exclusive line because I feel like these gems never really get talked about that much or not as much as they deserve to be. So when it comes to high fashion haute couture versus um, like daily wear, you do see a significant price difference. Whereas when you're talking fragrance, there is a difference in price between the main line and the exclusive line, but that gap is just a lot smaller. So if you get the chance to, I feel like it's worth taking a look at the exclusive line. So in no particular order, I'm gonna start off by talking about Cuir de Russie. This is a leather fragrance, and the story behind this fragrance I find to be um, fascinating. So this was released in 1927, about six years after number five was released. Now Coco Chanel was actually introduced to Ernest Beau, the perfumer behind this and the famous number five, by the Grand Duke Dimitri in Russia. And she was so inspired by the times and how the Russian Empire was now becoming the Soviet Union that she wanted to create a symbolic fragrance with Ernest Bou. So this is inspired by the boots worn by the Russian soldiers at this time. Cuillère de Russie is a smoky leather fragrance. It's a leather mixed with, I would say, ashtray or something reminiscent of. This has a strong aspect of birch tar, which was actually used to rub on the soldiers' boots to darken them at the time. And um, the combination of the leather with the birch tar and the tobacco is really wonderful. I do find that worn on clothing for me is better for this fragrance because on skin it just ends up developing a little bit barbecue-y. <laughs> but this is probably one of the most masculine from the exclusive line and yeah, Cuy de Lucie, an important one for me in my fragrance journey. Next we have Bois des Îles, which is another favorite of mine. This was released in 1926, and this has quite a strong um, background of Chanel Number no. 5, if I do say so myself, except it has a prominent sandalwood um, within. And Bois des Îles actually drew a lot of inspiration from Africa. So a lot of the couturiers at the time, Chanel herself, um, was inspired by Africa and like travels and things like that in her collection. So with a lot of these fragrances, you will see that what was being brought out on the runway correlated with what was then being released on the fragrance side. Similarly to number five, Bois des Îles is aldehydic, it's floral, it's woody, it's quite powerful. And this was actually the first ever woody fragrance for women, believe it or not. Of course, this has been reformulated since the 20s, like all of the fragrances in this line. There are so many restrictions on what ingredients can be used, so just keep in mind that with a lot of these fragrances, you will probably be needing to reapply um, throughout the day. 
So third, we have Bel Respiro, and I really love this fragrance. It's invigorating, it's uplifting, and it's green as well. Bel Respiro was inspired by Chanel's house in the Parisian suburbs, so you do feel like the herbs outside, the trees, the fresh air. Bel Respiro means actually a deep breath, and that's exactly what you feel when you spray this fragrance. It evokes the feeling of waking up from a nap taken in the outdoors, where you're laying in the grass, perhaps you've just had a picnic, and you just feel fulfilled filled with life. All of these are unisex, of course, whether they say for women or for men or whatever, but yes, all wearable by men and women. Next in my favorites from Chanel is Jersey, and Jersey is probably amongst the top for me because it has a prominent lavender note. So at the time, the material jersey was only used for men's undergarments and for sailors' sweaters. So Chanel wanted to convert that, being the pioneer that she was, and making it useful to the feminine wardrobe and started creating clothing that was more wearable, women could go out and have fun in and be comfortable yet still be elegant in. So it was the Roaring Twenties and part of this liberation was also in the liberation of what you wore. So Jacques Poge, the nose at Chanel, was very smart to then pick a note in perfumery that was distinctively masculine, which was lavender, and then try to incorporate it in a more feminine way. So he blended in bourbon vanilla, he blended in some sweet elements and musk, and therefore this lavender was now wearable to the woman as well. If you didn't think that lavender could be blended with vanilla, then you were deadly wrong because this is such a good combination. It turns out creamy, rounded, sweet, feminine yet masculine. It's just a gorgeous scent. So I really love Jersey and actually I'm surprised that I don't have a bottle of this one yet. Now probably one of the most popular fragrances from the exclusive line from Chanel is Coro Mondel and this one I have in the Parfum um, formulation. So this is inspired by the Coro Mondel um, screens. So they're the mahogany colored Chinese screens that you would see like in vintage films or whatnot. And Coco Chanel lined her entire apartment with these. She simply said that whenever she saw Coromandel, she would almost faint with happiness. So she collected a ton of these Coromandels and she did pay a tribute to them with this perfume. This is an oriental fragrance, as you might have guessed, with an amber base and patchouli, and it has this resinous feel to it that is borderline gourmand. The patchouli just ties it all together. So this is a unique one, one of the most unique I would say from the line, and that's Coro Mondel. I do have to reapply this as well throughout the day despite it being a parfum concentration. So again, yeah, maybe they could work on that, but um, we're talking about the scent here, folks, and this scent is fabulous. Let's talk about number 22. Number 22 was released only a year after number five, and it was only coincidence that number five came first. This shares a lot of characteristics to number five. I don't feel personally that it's that similar. This is a cold floral, aldehydic, just tons of white flowers mixed with the aldehydes. And there's something about the undertones of this that I feel throughout that reminds me of like an incense stick that has reached its end and burnt out. So that smoke is becoming cold. And try to notice if you ever sample number 22 or if you own this beauty. It smells extremely clean. I actually enjoy wearing this to the gym and it's almost clinical clean. Like no matter how much you're gonna sweat, this baby will keep you smelling good. <laughs> Next, we have 31 Rue Cambon, and this one is inspired by the Chanel property on, you guessed it, 31 Rue Cambon in Paris. This is a woody floral sheep fragrance, so it does have that element of patchouli, but it's definitely a white floral. And this is a floral that I enjoy on men 100%. I feel like it is stunning and could be pulled off by the classiest man. This definitely has the Chanel DNA running through it. I feel hints of number five in this as well but it's definitely a powdery floral with, you know, iris, with rose, with lang lang. This definitely has some sweet floral elements in it, whereas some other ones in this line are like completely stale on that front. Belle Respiro, I would say, is not sweet at all, whereas this is like more powdery, leaning feminine. 31 Rue Cambon is also inspired by the contrast that you see in a fashion line of like high and low and uh, Chanel had a very, you know, baroque influence style, yet she also tried to be very simple. So this kind of encompasses all of those elements of her taste. 
So the last one I'm going to be talking about is Sycamore and Sycamore has only recently risen up amongst my ranking lists because I've just really begun to appreciate the vetiver notes. So this is for vetiver lovers and you know it has the rooty elements of the vetiver but it's a clean vetiver, it's not a dirty vetiver and it has the woody elements tied in with a Chanel DNA. It is just a marvelous fragrance. It's heavily compared to Encre Noir by Lalique but I do find that Sycamore is more sophisticated and if I had to choose between the two I'd go for Sycamore. Sycamore definitely represents the depths of the forest so it has mossiness to it of course in a Chanel-esque way so still smelling clean and um, it just reminds me of Sycamore trees there the trunk of the tree hits the ground so there is grass surrounding it there's mossiness and then you have the roots right underneath maybe it's like one degree of a layer under where the tree grows that is the smell of sycamore and then add in the powdery cosmetic lushness of chanel and you now the more fabulous fragrances that i smell out there the less i gravitate towards chanel i must say and that's just due to availability to me but back in the day when i didn't have very many niche fragrances around me and i could go to the chanel boutique and then smell uh les exclusives this was like a great gateway to niche for me and i highly recommend that if you're you know starting out to go and smell the les exclusives line so there you go thank you so much for watching this video i do hope you check out pep's favorites that i've linked down below and i will see you in my next video